Hello GCT Chemistry Warriors. Welcome to your online uh, lecture today. I'm Mrs. McInnes and we will be going over module 13 in your Apologia chemistry book. We'll be covering pages 448 to 452 in this particular video. It'll cover example 13.1 and on your own 13.1. I suggest you have your book, a paper, and pencil available so you can follow along at home. Uh, in, this, in this chapter, we're looking at the concept of enthalpy, which is symbolized by a capital H. It refers to the energy stored in a substance. And the book points out that since during chemical reactions, substances are consumed and produced, the enthalpy can change in a reaction, and that change is symbolized by the delta H, or this triangle, which represents delta H. Um, this change in energy can be expressed in calories and or joules, and we know one chemistry calorie equals 4.184 joules. So I've summarized some information on pages 449 to 450 on this one particular slide. We're comparing and contrasting exothermic versus endothermic reactions. So an exothermic reaction would feel hot to the touch, right? Like a fire burning. It releases heat. We know here that the potential energy is converted into kinetic energy. In this case, the delta H is negative, and when you're writing uh, the, the chemical reaction in the formula, it's considered a product in the reaction. So you can see that red energy. So we contrast that to endothermic, which feels cold, absorbs heat. The kinetic energy in the surroundings is stored as potential energy. Here our delta H is positive, and the energy in this case is considered a reactant so on the left side of the arrow in the reaction. And an example of that would be, say, one of our instant cold packs. So let's move on to example 13.1. I'm on page, the bottom of page 451 into 452. So in this example, so just to follow along where, where I am, I'll put this up here, we have um, CH4, which is methane, undergoes complete combustion. And that change of enthalpy in this reaction is a negative 803.1 kilojoules. So this is a model of methane. We have the carbon in the middle with the hydrogens on the outside. It says write a balanced chemical equation representing the process. So first they're reminding us what complete combustion is. That's the addition of oxygen that eventually would produce carbon dioxide and water. So our unbalanced equation in this situation would be the methane plus the oxygen yields carbon dioxide and water. Now, after it's balanced, whoops, sorry, spoiler alert there, we got the bottom showing. All right, so after uh, taking um, count of our different molecules, we balance it with a two in front of the oxygen and two in front of the water. And now we have to add our energy. Since this is negative here, it's uh, implying that it's an exothermic reaction and the energy here is added as a product, so it'd be on the right side. So our final answer would be the CH4 plus the oxygen yields carbon dioxide water plus the 803 kilojoules. All right, let's move now on to page 452. We have your on your own. This particular on your own has three parts, an A, a B, and a C. So in this slide, I'm just doing the A, the first one. So it says, write a balanced chemical equation for the following processes. And it says, to be sure to include energy as a reactant or product. So it says, the formation of ammonium nitrate 
has a delta H of negative 65.1 kilojoules. So I'm following these three steps here. We're writing an equation, we're going to balance it, and then we'll add the energy. We already know the energy is negative, so it's going to be considered an exothermic reaction, and the energy will be put on as a product. So let's look here at our ammonium nitrate. Remember, these are two polyatomic ions. You have the ammonium and the nitrate. So if we're writing our equation, we have to look at, at, for the formation of this, we look at the different elements, and we have nitrogen, hydrogen, and oxygen, all found as homonuclear diatomic molecules, N2H2O2, but we need to balance this equation, right? So we have a two, a four, a three, and a two, that helps balance out all our uh, molecules. Then, um, we're going to take this balanced equation and add the energy. And so, as we mentioned before, since the energy is negative, the 365.1 uh, kilojoules will be put in as a product over here. So it's the same equation plus the energy. All right, now we will progress to 13.1b. And here we have the decomposition of manganese oxide, and in this case, it has a delta H of 519.7 kilojoules. So again, sorry, we're gonna write the equation, balance it, and here we're adding the energy. Since it's positive, we're, it will be considered a reactant because it's endothermic. So let's look at manganese oxide. It is, written, this is the abbreviation for manganese and oxide, and our equation, as it's uh, broken down, it's just broken down into the two elements. Then it's already balanced, we check for that, that looks good. Now we have to add the energy. Again, since the energy was positive, the 519.7 kilojoules is added as a reactant, so it's going to be added to the left side of the equation. And that's it for that one. All right, now let's look at our final on your own here. We have uh, the reaction between H2CO3, which is carbonic acid, and KOH, which is potassium hydroxide, releases 21 kilocalories. And in this case, again, we'll be writing an equation, balancing it, and then adding energy. So in this case, oops, looks like I got a little typo on here. In this case, since it is says the energy was released, we know automatically that it will be a product of it. So let's look at this. This is our equation. We have the carbonic acid, which is a, obviously an acid, the base, the potassium hydroxide, it yields water, H2O, and potassium carbonate. Now we're gonna to need to balance it, all right? So we balance, we can add a two here and a two here, and uh, we balanced it now. Now then it says we have to add our energy. Again, since we said it was released, it's gonna be added as a product. So it's the same equation as above, but we're adding the 21 kilocalories. So, that wraps it up for this particular lecture, and I will be posting more as we forge through our chapter, and uh, thank you for, uh, for being a great audience.